you, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today to support all of these fabulous women. To be completely honest, today is pretty bittersweet for me. 2022 went by so fast. Truth be told, even though my goal always was to become state coordinator so I can help other amazing women on this find their voices, I will miss being expected to wear my sash and crown at every event. Like most little girls, I relish the idea of being a princess, but I never willingly put on a tiara just to play pretend. Coming to Cain at an early age, I quickly learned the significance of crowns in the Bible. They are given by God to those who truly love and serve others and spread his goodness throughout the world. So I decided at seven years old that if I ever got to wear a crown, it would actually mean something honoring to God. Wearing this one all year has been a sweet reminder of my true identity, deepened my sense of purpose, and has been an answer to many prayers. I keep wondering if someone is going to come wake me up from an awesome dream. But then, I think back on the now seven year journey it's taken me to get here with all its frustration and pain, and the reality of my situation set in. If the trials I've endured on this journey have taught me one thing, it's that the best way to build relationships, cultivate fulfilling opportunities, and advocate for positive change in our community is to share our stories with one another. My platform for this year was always assume confidence because I wanted to teach the public not to assume that a person's limitations correlate to their mental competency, which is a misconception that I've had to contend with for my whole life. In fact, during two of my three previous pageants as a contestant, my ability to fulfill the stated goal of Miss Wheelchair Arizona was discounted because of my speech impairment. The judges weren't willing to let go of their preconceived notions of the perfectly spoken title holder and really listen to my story or see the value in my background. In fact, after I competed for the first time and lost a tea breaker, I was told point blank that I wasn't chosen because the judges assumed my speech impairment would hinder me from doing well at nationals. I was deeply offended and quite frankly appalled at that way of thinking. Just because my voice sounds different from other title holders doesn't mean people won't be encouraged by listening to my story and my mission won't have a positive impact on the disabled community. This is the reason my platform is what it is. It has become a profound blessing because I've been able to change the perspective of many future teachers, future therapists, as well as many members of different churches and the community at large. I've learned that positive change always begins with personal connections and that takes time, but it will happen with enough patience and grace for one another. This is the legacy I hope to leave for all the title holders that come after me. To all of you who have followed my journey, I am beyond grateful for your support, encouragement, and prayers. Don't worry, I'm not done yet. My platform has many more people to reach, so keep your eyes and ears open in the next few months. To all my beautiful contestants, I am proud of each of you. Thank you for trusting me to guide you on this journey. You are exactly what Psalm 31 describes, clothed in dignity and strength. You can laugh with no fear of the future. You have a great purpose ahead of you. Love, grace, peace, and lots of butterflies to you all.